Welcome to the cabin. Today we're doing part three in the Balacor series. If you haven't watched the previous videos in this series, click right here. That being said, let's get right to it. So before embarking on such a large project as this one, I wanted to make sure that I had a plan for the whole thing. While I do like the official paint scheme that they have on the box art and everything, and he does look shadowy and dark like he's supposed to in the background, I think that for me it becomes a little bit flat when there is so much black and grey all over the miniature. Both the wings and the skin and the whole stone base, um, there's just so much of a monotone going on. So I wanted my Bellacor to stand out a little bit more. I was looking for inspiration, and I found that the cover for the Age of Sigmar Broken Realms book, which features Bellacor, had so much more color and interesting contrasts going on. So I chose to base my Bellacor more on this sort of scheme, or at least be inspired by it to some extent. In order to find out a little bit more about how the artist painted their version of Bellacor in the artwork, I imported the um, cover itself into paint.net and, and I mean you could use any sort of uh, software that you have Photoshop or something similar is ideal as well um, and using the eyedropper tool in uh, the software I looked at the different parts of the artwork and tried to figure out how they painted it so starting with the wings, I tried to find one of the darkest parts uh, of the membranes of the actual wings. And analyzing it, you could see that it is almost a very dark uh, pink or purple kind of color that they painted it with. Almost burgundy. Next I tried to find some of the mid-tones, um, which look kind of orange. So I tried to find one of the mid-tones, and here it is. Kind of off orange, somewhere between pink and orange. And then finally I tried to find one of the highlights, like one of the highest tones that they painted it with. And doing that one it becomes quite bright orange, as you can see here. So that's kind of like a three scale color that helps to guide you on which colors to choose if you want to try and replicate a similar look for your model. I did the same thing for the skin. And you can see there's a stark contrast here between the brightest and the darkest parts. The very darkest parts are almost pure black. Trying to find a mid-tone here, they look kind of purple. Um, it's a little bit hard to find an exact one because the, they transition quite quickly from the mid-tone to the brightest part. But I think I found one right here. And yes, it's a dark purple tone. Finally, the very highlight um, becomes an off gray, almost like a, a light purple gray kind of color. So there you have it. Those are three colors for each of the main areas of the model, the membranes of the skin and the actual skin of Bellacor himself. And I find this is a very useful tool if you want to try to figure out what, which palette to use for your painting projects. So using this knowledge, I tried to figure out which paints to actually use. And before doing it on Balcor himself, I chose uh, another model that I could just do as a test model and try out my theories. I chose one of the Chaos Furies. This one is quite similar to Balcor. It has horns and wings uh, and the tail and everything like that, as well as standing on a rock that I could use, which is similar to the base of Balcor. So here's my test model. I tried out different colors, um, quite happy with the result, but there are some things that I'll probably change when I paint Bellacor himself. Some things that I think I can improve upon, and also some things that would be different when the surface area is so large uh, as it is on Bellacor himself. But it served to prove that the concept works, and it's not exactly like the cover of the book, but I think it's, it's a color scheme that works, and that's the most important part. So next up I had to undercoat all the different sub-assembly parts that I had prepared uh, when I put together the model. Um, I chose to undercoat them in some different colors now that I knew how I was going to paint the different areas of him. The chains uh, were all undercoated in lead belcher so that I could later pick out the skulls um, but leave the chains metal as they are. 
The scenic base was undercoated in Mechanicus Standard Grey to have kind of uh, a very quick and smooth way of, of painting it later with the base coat pretty much already applied. I also used Mechanicus Standard Grey for the wings. Now I could have used uh, a brighter color if I had wanted to, but my theory was that since the actual skin featuring on the wings would be black to purple, I didn't want to do it too bright. So I settled on a mid-tone for the Mechanicus Standard Grey that would work both for the membranes and for the actual skin. Bellacore himself was undercoated using uh, Chaos Black since most of his skin will have that black base and then I'll gradually build it up towards those brighter colors. Um, I wanted him to be black from the very beginning because the skin is the, is the largest surface area on him. I also undercoated the Chaos Warrior with Chaos Black since a lot of his armor panels would be black anyways. And finally, the Space Marine Corpse was undercoated with Wraithbone. I have an idea to paint it in the same scheme that my girlfriend's brother uses for his Space Marines. So I'd start up with a bright color here to make that work later on. So after all the undercoating was done, I decided to start with the membrane of the wings, which is what I will show you in this video. This is probably the largest surface area of the entire model. The wings are so large and they feature this detail on both sides of them. I started with a base coat of 50% pink horror and 50% squig orange. I mixed this up with a bit of airbrush flow improver and thinner and applied it using the airbrush just to quicken the whole process and to make it smooth over such a large area. After this base coat was applied, I used Screamer Pink to kind of sketch out where the shadows are supposed to be. I kept this in the recesses and um, this looks very rough right now and we're going to fix that soon. It's just basically kind of like a blueprint to be used for the shadows. The next part is sort of a wet blend, I guess you would say where I try to blend together the shadows with the original base coat mix. I tried doing this in a couple of different ways. First up, I applied the Screamer Pink in the recesses and the base coat around the recesses and tried to blend them together in a couple of stages while the paint was still wet. And here's where the blueprint kind of comes in handy. I applied quite a lot of Flow Improver. Uh, it's a product used for airbrushing, but I wanted to use it here kind of like a paint retarder uh, to give myself more time uh, before the paint dries for this kind of wet blend stage. I also added a little bit of water to make them very thin and smooth. I did this in small areas at a time so I could fix an entire area well before the paint dried and then move on to the next one. I also used the same base coat mix with uh, the flow improver to kind of do a quick layer over everything to try and establish that base coat once again. Later on, I also tried just applying the base coat mix over an entire area and then going in with Screamer Pink to the recesses and the deeper parts and blending them like that. This saved some time and it helped mix the, the colors together as well. And I used both of these approaches together as I did the entire wings. This stage was probably the most time consuming. I spent quite a few hours trying to wet blend everything together. But as you could see, when I compare before and after on these two wings right here, it's quite a big difference. Um, you could ignore this stage if you want to do a more simplistic version, or you could even use maybe a shade paint um, of some sort, maybe Caribou Crimson or something instead of this one but I feel like when the surface detail is so large, I wanted to make it look as good as I could. And a little extra effort went a long way. The first highlight was using the same base coat mix, uh, but this time mixing in about 50% Troll Slayer Orange uh, to make it brighter and more towards orange. I used this one to layer some highlights, focusing on the ridges um, and doing some brush strokes on the flat parts as well. The next stage was to use pure Troll Slayer Orange as highlights, and this one I kept to the ridges. 
As a final edge highlight, I used Bestigore Flesh, and I tried to keep these highlights very thin to, to the very edge of all the ridges. It just makes it pop a little bit more. This one goes beyond what you saw in the artwork, but I felt it needed this one to pop. In the artwork, they had also painted in some veins um, in the actual membranes. I liked this one, so I tried to replicate it just a little bit. I used Screamer Pink, which is again the darkest part of this uh, paint scheme, and using a small detail brush, I just try to do very careful veins uh, on some parts of the wing. I try not to overdo it, but I still added um, both short ones and longer ones across the wings. The final step is a glaze with Blood Angels Red, one of the contrast paints. I diluted this one with a lot of contrast medium, just a tiny part uh, Blood Angels Red to create a, a, quite a weak glaze. And I kept this one towards the deepest parts where the kind of uh, skeletal structure and meets the membranes. I did this to add a little bit of red because there's a lot of red when you look at the artwork, but also to enforce the shadows closest to the kind of skeletal structure. And there you have it. All the membranes of both of the wings have now been painted. This took longer than I thought, uh, but it is also the largest surface detail, as I said before. So it's nice to have all that area finished, and now I can move on to other details according to the paint plan that I set up. Thank you so much for watching this series. We'll be back with more parts where I finish off Bellacor in the future. If you like this video, please consider subscribing or giving it a thumbs up. I'll see you next time. Good luck with your miniatures.